Now we are going to answer the question, what is a PLC? A PLC is a general purpose microprocessor controller, microprocessor based controller used in, the, in industrial applications. Using PLCs in industrial applications have uh, several advantages. The first thing is that the hardware of PLCs has noise immunity measures which make uh, the PLC the suitable controller for the industrial environments which have uh, all sources of noise and uh, interference. So the hardware is, we can call it noise immune. It has modular structure allowing addition and replacement of units. We build the microprocessor system uh, uh, by uh, adding modules to the system as they are required. You don't have to, uh, to build full-scale PLC from the very beginning. You can start with uh, simple modules and add modular uh, structure to the PLC system as, uh, as is required by the application. Uh, the main advantage of using PLCs is that they have standard input-output units with uh, hardware interfaces for direct connection of input devices, which are normally the process transducers, and output devices, which are the process actuators. This uh, connection does not require any additional hardware uh, by the uh, control engineer. Uh, as long as it, uh, the output and the input units were chosen correctly according to the uh, requirements of the process. Uh, the final uh, thing is that programming and reprogramming of the PLCs is very easy and they can be programmed on site. In this slide, we have a drawing representing the PLC system, which consists of a power supply and the CPU, uh, which is the central processing unit of the PLC. Uh, it has a memory space, which, which uh, is divided into program memory and work or data memory. Uh, in addition to the input module and the output module, the input module uh, to which the input devices are connected, the output module to which the output uh, devices being controlled uh, are connected. And finally, we have the programming device, which is normally a PC with a special uh, application uh, on a DVD, uh, giving the, uh, the programming environment of, of the PLC. The programming device is usually connected to the PLC during uh, the development of the program, uh, testing and debugging. Uh, and after the program is completed, the pro programming device can be disconnected from the PLC. So the PLC does not require a programming device uh, all the time during operation. The central processing unit is responsible for controlling and supervising all the operations of the PLC. Uh, and uh, the central processing unit is connected to the other parts of the PLC through uh, a communication bus. Uh, the memory unit for storage of program, we call it program memory, and the uh, for storage of data and outcomes of internal functions during uh, execution of program, we call it the work memory. The input and output units are the modules that uh, give the uh, required interface between the internal hardware of the PLC and the outside world uh, coming <coughs> from input device and uh, output device. Uh, input and output units operate at specific voltage levels. So either AC or DC, and they are selected according to the intended input-output devices uh, in the process, uh, which, are, which are connected to the uh, inputs are connected to the process transducer and outputs are connected to the uh, process actuator. We should choose the input-output units uh, with the uh, 
operation voltage required either uh, AC or DC by the input devices and the output device. Each input uh, channel in the input unit uh, has a specific status bit in the uh, input memory with a unique ad address to store a one or zero depending on the state of the input device connected to this input channel uh, whether it is on or off similarly each output channel has a specific status bit with a unique address to store a one or zero depending on the required control of the output device to be switched on or off in case the, the, uh, this is in case of digital outputs and digital inputs uh, plcs can deal with analog outputs and analog inputs but it will not be considered in this uh, uh, course we are limited to digital inputs and, di and digital outputs uh, finally the programming unit is usually a usual plc with the necessary programming environment running as an application program now we are going to illustrate how we select uh, the modules of a PLC system. First, we, you have to select the main unit, which uh, consists of the CPU and the uh, memory space uh, available in the PLC system, either for program or for, uh, for work memory. By choosing the main unit, you limit the number of inputs and outputs that can be connected to the, to the CPU by the maximum allowed uh, input devices and output devices that can be interfaced to the uh, CPU through, through the communication bus. Uh, and you limit the uh, uh, speed of the processor and you limit the uh, size of program that can run on this PLC. So it is very important to have uh, thorough uh, examination of the available uh, main units of PLCs before uh, choosing of, or selecting the main unit of the, uh, uh, of the PLC system you are going to build. Afterwards, uh, you choose the input and output units de depending on the number of inputs, input devices to be connected to the PLC and the number of output devices to be controlled by the PLC. Uh, and you have to be aware of the voltage levels required by the process transducers and actuators. During operation, the PLC uh, executes programs in real time uh, from beginning to end, depending on the uh, current values stored in the input status bits. During program executions, the uh, program may change the values of the output status bits appearing in the program from one or zero. The input status bits are contain ones or zeros dep depending on the uh, input devices connected to the PLC, whether they are on or off. And similarly, during program execution, you write ones or zeros depend uh, in the output status bits depending on uh, the required switching uh, of the output device to on or off states. Uh, so we have an input image containing the input status bits and we have an output image containing the output status bits. Uh, uh, programs on PLCs are uh, executed in continuous cycles as will be shown in the next slide. In this slide, we have uh, a diagram representing the three phases of execution of uh, the program, we call it the PLC program scan cycle. The first uh, stage uh, in which the uh, input image is updated depending on the states or the current states of the connected input devices uh, by copying ones or zeros to the input status bits corresponding to these input devices. Afterwards, the program is executed and during program execution, uh, output status bits uh, are used to store uh, the required ones or zeros corresponding to the required uh, states of the output devices, whether they are on or off. 
Uh, after program, program execution, we go to the last phase of the program cycle in which uh, uh, output status bits are copied to the output devices. If an output status bit contains one, this means that the output device should be switched on. If an output status bit has uh, zero, this means that the output uh, device is, con uh, is switched off. We have to know that uh, program cycles uh, are, ex or are uh, executed in a duration of milliseconds. So from the first phase to the last phase, uh, the uh, time duration of a one program scan cycle will be in the order of uh, hundreds of milliseconds. So that if any input device changes uh, its state from on to off or off to on, it will not be observed until the, uh, the input processing phase of the next program cycle. This provides or constitutes latency of uh, reacting to the input changes. But usually an input device will maintain its value for longer than uh, 100 milliseconds. So any change on an input device will not be missed. Uh, to give you an idea uh, of the uh, the time of uh, uh, changing inputs in the uh, real time, if we have push buttons, a push button uh, pressed by a human being, this pressing will last between 200 and 300 milliseconds. And this is a very short time compared, so uh, this is a, a, a this is a long time compared to the uh, very short time of the program scan cycle. So changes occurring on the input devices after the input processing phase is finished will not be uh, reacted upon or felt until the, the uh, input processing phase of the next program scan cycle. And as I said, uh, the time uh, for changing inputs is much longer than the uh, program scan cycle, which is in the order of 50 to 100 milliseconds. And uh, ch the change of inputs may last for 200 or 300 milliseconds. Programming instructions uh, and addressing schemes used in uh, PLCs depend uh, on the uh, manufacturer of the PLC and they can change from one PLC manufacturer to another. In this course, we will uh, adopt uh, a Mitsubishi FX series PLC. Uh, addressing of input status bits uh, in the Mitsubishi FX series uh, is uh, based on a symbol X followed by an octal number, and addressing of output status bits uh, is based on a symbol Y followed by an octal number. Uh, logical functions uh, described in the PLC programs depend on uh, simple logical uh, uh, operations uh, which we call examine on and examine off. And uh, in the shown truth tables, we have an input status bit x1, uh, which may be 0 or 1, and the outcome of uh, performing examine on on this bit is shown in the truth table. Similarly, if uh, we, uh, we also use uh, uh, an examine of logical operation described by the shown uh, truth table. We combine these logical operations with and, or, uh, and not uh, functions so that any relationship between an output and input status bits can be described by a Boolean expression uh, as shown in this slide, we have y1 depending on the o-ring of two inputs, y2 depends on the ending of two inputs, and y3 uh, is described by the shown Boolean expression. 